Welcome to the Hero Escape Podcast, your weekly escape from trying to fit that Spidey suit on after one too many churros. I am one of your three co-hosts, Peter Porker, and I am joined by... Scotch Butterstain. <laughs> Where do you... I lo- uh, okay. It's pure genius is what it is. <laughs> all right, and I'm the amazing Spider Corliss today mm. because that's all I could come up with, and I wanted to keep the real name in there and give a shout out to somebody. My niece was visiting the Canole family reunion out in Utah, and they knew us by name. So my love goes out to the Canole family and True fans. the friends that she met there. And my goodness, we just want to love you. the The Hero Escape Podcast loves you too. All right. Thank so you for today, listening. Yeah. I think that now makes us officially the number one podcast of rural Utah. Yeah. Somewhere, wherever that was in Utah. Yeah. Okay. We're kind so, of a big deal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ron Burgundy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Leather bound books. Okay. So speaking of things that we love, we love the Marvel Cinematic Universe. If you have not caught on to this podcast and Infinity the, War. Yeah. Sorry. Carry on. <laughs> the flagship of all things Marvel has been from uh, for decades now has been Spider-Man. And we did a little while ago kind of a scare character sketch episode of the Joker and we wanted to spend, do a good guy and who better and to do than the one the only the amazing Spider-Man. 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 Whatever. Okay. We yeah. had to get Spider-Man. it in there once. <laughs> <Spider-Man>. <laughs> so Dave, you are our resident Marvel expert. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's, let's do a, a brief character sketch. Some of this, maybe trivia, the things that might not I know from the comic books and Marvel source. studies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Masters. I thought, uh, I thought so you had your Spider-Man. doctorate. Didn't you have your doctorate? I I, I'm was working, working for it. It's, uh, I don't the know. The paperwork. It's one of yeah. those <laughs> online universities. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right. Well, I, I, yeah. I mean, the only, yeah. Anyway, okay. Spider Man. Uh, so, <laughs> real name Peter Benjamin Parker. Uh, so we'll. I, I feel like most people probably know this, but we'll cover some of the basics if you didn't know. So he can cling to most surfaces yeah. like a spider. Whoa! Hence wait. The name. What? Whoa, what? Yes. What? Yeah. Um, his strength varies. I feel like I've read this, but most sources will say ten tons. But I know I've read it. It's been up to twenty tons. One of the favorite tidbits uh, you share with me is how Peter Parker will occasionally let it slip to other superheroes. Like, I'm way stronger and faster and agile than people ever realize yeah. because he doesn't use He it. holds way back. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I will get into this later on, but one of my... It's a very big deal to him that my, he doesn't actually kill people. He does not like yeah, to kill even the bad guys. He like, he's, yeah. he holds away. Like, say so he, um, uh, we'll get into this later on, but one of the, a good, one of the best, uh, Spider-Man stories is a superior Spider-Man. And, um, at one point someone comments that, is able to realize his full strength says, Oh my gosh, you've been holding back for so long. I can't believe how strong you are. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, so, um, yeah. So <clears throat> has superhuman reflexes, agility enhanced by his precognitive spider sense, which allows him to kind of, uh, it's like the Jedi sense. Right? Yeah. yeah unconsciously like kind of know when danger is coming. And that, and, that, and that and also directly links to his sort of musculature. So his it's body, he, sweet. if you'll see in comics and stuff, he will get in these crazy positions with bullets all around because his body naturally knows how to get out of the way of bullets. So he can twist and flex all the way out of like yeah. automatic Spidey gunfire. Science. Is yeah. that supposed to be some link up to the fact that spiders can sense things moving on their web? Because otherwise, what does no, it have to do with the spider? It doesn't really, I think. Stanley well, they talk about the reflex. Like, remember in the Toby, first Tobey Maguire movie, or they talk about making a super spider, and they some of these spiders, their reflexes are so fast that it borders on precognizance. Like, it's just a reflex. That's the right. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's sounds like a, reflex that a movie trying to explain. That, that's a movie trying to explain. I don't know if the comics ever really explained it. I, I, I guess they sort I of did. Like it was, an animal sixth again, sense. You know what I mean? Even like, in the yeah. comics, it was a experimented upon spider. It was a radioactive spider so, back when that was the cool term. So, Dave, um, has your research? Have we ever uncovered where does he get these powers from, David? He gets these powers from a radioactive spider. <gasps> <laughs> so I think you they don't attribute say. anything that's unknown. They attribute to the oh, it's also radioactive. So that's where he gets his powers from. You know, yeah. back when you know, because these a lot of these the classic superheroes they were all came out during like the sixties or fifties, and that's Daredevil when Devil is radioactive uh, goo, goo or something got on like his that. Eyes, got on his right. eyes, so yeah. he now has yeah. blind. You know. it, it, and this was the era of fifties and sixties where nuclear nuclear power was a, a new thing that was also scary. We could wipe out the earth, and what is all this radio? It was one of those things that played on the conscious. Yeah. of the of society yeah. and so that's where that's why tons of these origin and stories of, yeah. have something to do with 
you know, nuclear or toxic or, or, or something like that. Yeah. Cosmic, you know, space travel or something like that. Yeah. And so Spider-Man was the same thing. Yeah, just they threw the, yeah, radioactive. Yep. And I'm glad we did this podcast all this time. I thought it was a politically active spider. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Politically active. All right, yeah. and that's a wrap. Woo! He's socially active. He's on Facebook a lot. Uh, anyway, um, he's also originally Peter Parker was uh, the when they wrote him he was just a sort of a, a very intelligent, a, a gifted, intelligent young man. But in more recent iterations, he's almost at the Tony Stark uh, like genius. They, they, level. they have like, given him genius they've level. Made yeah. him like extremely intelligent to where like even Hank Hank Pym. I don't know if you don't watch. The movies, well, in the movies, I, I think yeah, and, uh, he's he's the inventor Man. of the Ant Man suit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, in the comics, he's a more active actual Avenger. There's uh, and uh, he's supposed to be one of the smartest guys on the planet, and he is. It gets a little irritating after a while, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. how many? You know, you get too many guys with There's genius level, genius. and now you're, you get them all in a room, and you're thinking, all right, now who's supposed to be the smartest here? Yeah, is exactly. it Tony Stark? Is it Bruce yeah, Banner? Well, they have is it Hank Pym? They kind of have like different fields that they're good in, right? Yeah. Like Mister Fantastic, like they, he like just knows everything. Right? It's Mister Fantastic, yeah, yeah but answer, right, right, like yeah, but then like they're geniuses, but genius with a different uh, yeah, sharpened different sword in a different. Field. But you gotta yeah. love about Hulk though, yeah. superpowers, dumb as a rock. Dumb mm-hmm. as you know what I'm saying? So the first Spider-Man appearance was in 1962. Is what I got. Is that what you found, Dave? You know, uh, yeah, his appearance. Yeah, yes, not, first the first appearance, but not the first Spider-Man comic. Comic. Yes, but he was a kind of an instant instant success. It seemed like and took off and had. Yes. I think their main storyline for a- Amazing Spider-Man is now in like three hundred and sixtieth release. I mean, this is a yeah. one. Uh, this is a marathon comic book uh, release, and it's been around for a long time because yeah. Spider-Man you mean version or something. Because awesome. uh, like actual numbered comics, numbered. Are, yeah, for, no, I numbered up. comics. I think they're close to a thousand. Yeah, I'm just because they have the different ones. Like they have yeah. spectacular Spider-Man, Ultimate yeah. Spider-Man, like you teased, but then their amazing Spider-Man comic was like an issue 300 and something. I think I'm I, assuming I think his higher, first appearance was his own title too. No, he didn't no, show it up. Was, in, he showed was up in it Journey into Mystery? Book? I think it might it have been Journey into Mystery. I have it right here. It was in first appeared in a comic book called Amazing Fantasy oh, number amazing 15. Fantasy, that's what it was. Ah, yeah. In so the Silver yeah. Age of comic books. A little similar to you Batman in that but way. It was pretty yeah. and Superman. Pretty Action popular in and, and uh March 1963 they gave him the Amazing Spider-Man yeah. comic. And that's how that's kind of how the formula has always been in comic books. You have this new character you want to invent and you tease him, you make him appear yeah. in another book yeah. and see if people like like yeah. it before you invest into a whole line. Kind of like, you know, you've already got this Civil War movie, it's pretty much all the way in and Maybe you throw in a little, uh, you know, <laughs> new friendly new character. Spider-Man. See how see, people resonate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huh. Cameo. Yeah. I think <laughs> then you give him his own. Movie. Yeah. No, I don't know if that applies. Spider Man was already a pretty popular character. Yeah. But, yeah. I guess that might be. Well, I don't know. That may be more the actor. So in the comic out. books, there's the traditional story we've seen where he's kind of down on his luck. He's working for the Daily Bugle as a photographer. Yeah. Gets Can I, different, I throw different jobs a, a, a tidbit or two? Just yeah, interesting tidbits about Spider Man people may not have known. Uh, hmm. He's the tidbit. first teen superhero that was not a sidekick. That was very revolutionary at the time they oh. thought all of ours are comic our heroes are adults and it seems like there's a clamor for teenage teenagers want their own and so he was the first time he wasn't there was already pre there was teen heroes already like bucky barnes was a sidekick robin so he was the own first uh and they called him spider-man because they felt like they wanted him to grow into that role of spider-man instead of spider-boy yeah and um, with the suit on you really and it, yeah, couldn't tell know. And um, it, when he was first released, those that first generation that was exposed to him, and they did like a survey of iconic characters of college students, and mm-hmm. Spider Man was one of the people that they identified with. This yeah. is like, and they said because he was the everyday, he was the everyman. It was he was one of us. They referred to him as one of us because mm-hmm. he had real problems. Yeah, you know, it wasn't like he just lived this amazing life. And that's always been an appeal to about Spider Man. I think that's one of the major appeals of that he is has very real problems. Uh, I'll talk about this more later on but that's one of my one of the reasons that um spider-man 2 is one of my favorite movies uh, it's my probably my favorite spider-man movie uh uh can i can i go more to the background spider-man briefly yeah, yeah, I'll make yeah, this yeah, quick. yeah i know yeah. we all know but, this but, and fans of the you guys probably don't do it too but he was orphaned as a child raised yeah. by his aunt may and uncle ben uh and we know sorry uncle ben was killed uh and mm-hmm. which led to spider-man's deciding to be a hero you said earlier that sometimes people don't realize this at first he didn't use his powers he with, only was going to use his powers to support a Aunt May and Uncle Ben always struggled for money, so we thought, I will use my powers to make us well off. And that was his only... Making like TV show appearances and doing shows. I'll become a celebrity. The amazing things he could do, right? Uh, And then... And then Uncle Ben died, and he... And through his inaction, through his neglect, mm -hmm. and then he realized that, oh, I have this responsibility to protect people. I need to do that. Um, So... um, The birth of one of the greatest lines 
that per, that becomes the ethos. With great power of, comes great responsibility. Yes, yeah. so the ethos of Spider Man can be summed up in that one line, mm-hmm. and really, with great power comes great responsibility, is that essential ingredient in a great hero. Mm-hmm. Like we've said this before, the powers make the may make the story interesting, but what makes you love the character is when they do. You know, the hard, they do something very, very the difficult right, because yeah. it's the right thing to do because they feel responsible because they, for love, they make that hard, hard, right decision, self sacrificing. Yeah. And Spider Man does this to a T. From about right? 2005 to 2010, I read a lot of Marvel comics. And oftentimes, which is also the same as we did before then to 2005. But yeah. okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, oftentimes, in the comics, there'd be some story arc or something, and multiple times, it, um, it, it sometimes it would occur in the future. It'd be like a what if story, the alternate timeline in the future, and and several times in in these comics, uh, other like Captain America and other you know big time heroes would reference that Spider Man becomes eventually is or will be the greatest superhero of all time. Like that, hmm. there, there's one where there's like a specific like, and I can't remember the name of the story arc, but uh, it's in the far future when the, uh, most of the superheroes have been killed and. And somebody had come back from the come back from the future and references that Spider Man. Uh, he said, "Oh, he said he kind of was surprised like that guy is going to become the greatest superhero of all time because he can't believe it." But in the future, yeah. he is the greatest superhero because Spider Man is so easygoing. And yeah. that in the comic books as well as in most movie iterations, they show him he's very off the cuff, one liners, silly comments, leaving yeah. little notes, favorite, favorite or your friendly neighborhood Spider Man, all those different things. And so this guy comes back from the future to see that he's kind of this unassuming mm-hmm. silly guy right yeah. and like this guy is the greatest yeah and if i understand correct me if i'm wrong it's not necessarily become because he becomes as powerful as superman and does something galactic it's just because he's peter parker making he sticks decisions. to making the hard right decision no matter what he gives everything to being yeah. spider-man and i would al- i would also add there's a very specific reason why the uncle ben thing works very well I won't go into it in too much depth. You can look it up online. There's a storytelling template I might have talked about before called The Hero's Journey, and it lays out the story beats you should have in a great hero story. Two of the key beats that they all must have is, one, the call to adventure, Mm -hmm. out of your normal life into something else, and the next one is the refusal of the call. And if you think about it, that's present in all the story archetypes. Luke has the call to adventure in A New Hope. And what's his first reaction to all this news? Oh, I can't, I can't. go. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, gotta do. do da, da, da. Yeah, I gotta take care of the farm. Every single time, that is the pattern. So this whole thing of he gets these powers, but he doesn't. He doesn't act on them. He doesn't answer the call. And then this event with Uncle Ben, and then that's when he, you know, crosses the threshold. Mm-hmm. Anyway, that's what I thought of. Yeah, so it makes good storytelling, right? Yeah. And so the the powers might put the sparkles in our eyes and our imagination, but. The heart of the story has to make your get your blood pumping too for it to be good. And Spider Man has always been successful because they've really always done that well mm-hmm. in modern versions. Am I? Yeah, yeah. So, any other cool tidbits there from the source material um, we should know? I, I think that's a lot of it. I'll say briefly. I know the so the the if people watch the movies, they might know mostly Mary Jane Watson as his love interest. Yes, yeah. maybe Gwen Stacy from the two movies that uh, Andrew Garfield did uh, mm-hmm. after the after the Tobey Maguire movies. But if you don't, most people probably don't know. If you remember the movies, J. Jonah Jameson, the guy that hates Spider-Man, runs the Daily uh, uh, Daily Bugle newspaper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. His secretary um, is Betty, Betty Brandt. Betty Brandt. And okay. she was actually his first love interest in the comics. And she, mm-hmm. he was madly in love with her. But uh, some events happened that where she loses interest in him. So he's sort of brokenhearted about that. And a few years later in college meets Gwen Stacy. And they eventually get together and, and are uh, like each other a lot. And she... Uh, tragically dies. Uh, the, I, I don't remember how it happens. I think in the movie, it's similar. She's, alert. She gets thrown off a bridge by the Green yeah, Goblin. It's the Green Goblin. Spider-Man he goes tries to, to save catch him. her with the webbing, and he does, but the, it stops her so suddenly. He doesn't. He, yeah, he he. Uh, the, the whip it still neck. snaps her neck. Yeah, Presumably, yes. the same Gwen Stacy or Gwen, I should say, from the Spider Verse storylines. Uh, Spider yes. Gwen, the recent yeah, Spider Gwen, same okay. one, alternate yeah. timeline, I believe. So yeah. very, very tragic. So it's only the newer yeah. iterations because this is what comic books do. Everybody, they retell their story. They keep yeah. the same essential ingredients the same. But so it's only the re- more recent ones where he's had a love interest in high school. Yeah. That was important. All yeah. in the source material, original source material, it came later, and in more adult settings like college or professional, when he's uh, the photographer. Mm-hmm. Um, but okay. it, yeah, 
Uh, there's a very, uh, again, I, I, there's a very good Spider-Man comic that happens years later, very similar situation, but I think it's with Mary Jane. And it's, if you know that story about Gwen Stacy, it's very sad. Spider-Man's very broken for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, a very similar thing happens with Mary Jane, I believe. And, um, it kind of gets your, your heart catches in your throat a little bit because you know it's this very traumatic thing for Spider-Man. And, um, and this time he has to do the same thing. He's got a web, this girl that's been thrown off the bridge. Mm-hmm. And he, but he's gone over the mind so much that this time he, he plans very well and he webs all the way up her back to catch mm. and you know cushion that shock to her system and and saves her life and it was very cathartic for, for the reader him. and for spider-man yeah, yeah like, over does it accidentally wraps her in a suffocating cocoon good <laughs> job yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. um <laughs> way to go in a thing i'm saying <laughs> as kind of a yeah as 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 the person that i am it was very yeah. cathartic for me to see that and to see spider-man have that closure of saving somebody uh, yeah. correctly but anyway we're going uh so then he later on meets mary jane um and they date but not seriously and he but he then eventually proposes to her and she says no so he's, and he's down about which that. is a total like this yeah. doesn't happen like the, yeah. it's classic for peter That's parker classic peter this parker type of like, things to oh. happen for her to say no that didn't happen in other superheroes yeah and but, but it did for him you know, yeah. did she know who he was <laughs> no she did not <laughs> he mm. didn't just propose to her off the that yeah. is the time when you pull the shirt up and yeah. you're like really, really? Are you sure you want to say no, no to this <laughs> anyway um he dates a couple other girls, not seriously. It eventually comes back around to Mary Jane dating more and getting more serious. And he proposes again. And then in 1987, he proposed and they, they got married. And it was like a huge event in Marvel, actually. Yeah, they, they actually, actually did like a ceremony a with people ceremony. standing in. They had a them. model and Stan that Lee looked sort of like the, Mary uh, Jane yeah. stand in. And I think Stan Lee officiated it. Yeah, it was a big yeah. deal. It was, it, was, it was like, some people call it one of the best uh, Spider-Man story arcs, the wedding uh, yeah. arc or whatever like that. Wow. I think it's what it's called. So, and, and here's a tidbit. Uh, Gwen Stacy's death marks the end of the Silver Age of comics. Whoa. Yeah. That was it. That cataclysmic. That cataclysmic. So I got a, I got a source material trivia question for you guys. Okay. I, I was surprised by this. It raised the eyebrow, the right one, when I learned it. <laughs> so one of the things that makes a great hero, of course, we just talked about making the hard right, being relatable, the hero. Uh, it just, what did you call it again? Hero's Journey. Hero's Journey. I wanted to get it right. Thank you. But also, you got to have... Big budget. Oh, wait. No. Sorry. No? Okay. Very good villains. Yes. You've got to have the good villains. Batman. Batman has got the best villains, <laughs> and Batman will forever be awesome. So, I was looking up some of the Spider-Man villains, which he's got the biggest... Next to Batman, he's got the biggest assortment. He's got a full deck of cards. The Rogues Batman. Gallery. The Rogues Gallery. That was the phrase I was... Building up to there of villains that are just awesome. But the first one he ever fought in The Amazing Spider-Man number one is... The Jackal. Ooh, that's a good guess. What about you, Nathaniel? The, Teenage I, Insecurity. I want to say... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, acne. Uh, it was wanna, the Akinator. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, I want to say like the Vulture or the Jackal, but I don't... I, don't I, I would be inclined... I know that this is probably not true, but I would be inclined to assume that the most iconic was also the first, as okay. in the case of Batman. You okay. would guess Joker. Yeah. So I would guess like Green Goblin or something okay. like that. It's not Green Goblin. See, I would have guessed Green Goblin, and I was wrong. The first one is the chameleon. The chameleon. Oh, I yes. knew it was an animal. So the chameleon, yeah. which is cool because that's an animal that would eat bugs, and Spider-Man is a bug, right? Yeah. So it kind of goes. And I just found that interesting because... The next, like the next eight people on the list have all pretty much all been done cinematically and most of them very cool, compelling villains, but they haven't done this one. And I'm just wondering, are they going to do? I don't even know much about the chameleon. I'm guessing he can change colors, but I'm anyways. guessing he didn't make many future appearances after that because I haven't heard right about so, that. So I don't know. He, the other maybe, ones? maybe I he was weak sauce. So, um, Spider Man killed him. <laughs> broke his neck we just talked about Move along. Kill, yeah. if you're giving paging to a guy called craven the hunter yeah chameleon's got to be pretty bad yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the number two was vulture then dr octopus then the sandman if you remember from oh, spider-man yeah, yeah. 3 i just watched spider-man 3 last night in preparation for this episode oh, oof, and awesome. i just want to say the sandman character in that movie is awesome and even the special effects really hold up they they do so much emotion when he's trying to like grow himself out of that sand after he mm-hmm. turns i forgot how well they did yeah. like i remember it as like man this movie had some serious flaws in it but mm. the sandman character was awesome i loved yeah. it anyways character so sandman's vulture specifically i would say there's a couple of villains in particular that the casting in those was amazing and 
and Sandman, I feel like, was great casting, mm-hmm. as well as the Doc Ock guy. Yep. Oh, yeah, that yeah, guy. He just was, he's so, one of my Spider-Man favorite. Bang I would say he might be one of my favorite Marvel movie villains. He's, he does a really good job. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then it goes Lizard, which was the first one for the Amazing Spider-Man, the movie. with uh, Dr. Connors. Dr. Connors, which I thought they did. It was a cool, very good villain, yeah. compelling villain. Then Electro. And then the one they haven't done yet, but has been teased, Rhino. Mysterio. Oh, Mysterio. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mysterio. So he's like a master of deception and optical illusions. So, so if you want to, there's a funny website called Text from Superheroes. <laughs> and uh, there's a thing where uh, Daredevil is texting, texting Spider-Man, Daredevil is blind. And so yeah. all of his optic illusions don't work on Daredevil. <laughs> so he's like, hey, one of your villains showed up here. He was just standing there. So I punched him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> And Spider-Man's like, oh, yeah, that, that, that will work on you, right? Uh, do you want to take him? You can have him now. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like, That's so brilliant. I love that. Yeah. Rumors. He's like, I think one of the, even the second thing, he's like, was he wearing a fishbowl on his head? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 he yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. He, he, <laughs> he wears, wears a fishbowl. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry, I cut you off. I just was going to say, there's rumors floating around that the uh, follow-up, whatever the follow-up will be to Spider-Man Homecoming, uh, that that will be the villain. And there's people talking about Jake Gyllenhaal possibly playing Mysterio, so... Okay. Take from that what you will. Is it just so, anytime there's a superhero movie come up, you have to throw Jake Gyllenhaal's name as a, as a possibility? Right? <laughs> it's like just like, feel good. Yeah. You know who I? You know who I would He's really? Stand-in, I yeah. think I would love to see as Mysterio. I think would do a really good job. Maggie Gyllenhaal, Matt Damon. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Here's the thing, though. If he's top billed and actually in the whole movie. Fine. Right. If the movie's going along at a merry clip and then out of nowhere comes Matt Damon, unacceptable. Uh, Doc point one. All right. I had to tease him. I don't want him to be in the movie. I don't want him to be in the movie. I will say even if he's... I'm totally How kidding. do you like them apples? All right. I'm totally kidding about Matt Damon being Mysterio. But I just had now to tease Now, Ben Affleck. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, Ben Affleck. <laughs> I was going to say that, but then I thought... Mm. I'm going to get you spider I'm going to get you Spider-Man. Yeah. 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 Uh, then we know some of his other good villains, Green Goblin, Craven the Hunter, that they form a team even after a while, the Sinister Six. We got Scorpion, we haven't seen yet, but we've seen Rhino, Shocker, Kingpin. Uh, there's Morbius, we haven't seen the Ooh, Jackal, question. Black Cat, Hydra Man, Hobgoblin, and then the two more famous recent ones, Venom and Carnage. Mm. Good. Uh, I don't know if you got it in front of you because I'm the DC guy. I don't know. Is Vulture one of these Sinister Six? Yes. So they yeah. could be building towards that MCU. Wouldn't no. surprise me well, at all. Well, they already sort of had the vulture, right? Uh, with the homecoming one was the vulture. I know. That's so what I'm saying. He's in the universe, so he's there to go. Yeah. And remember, the tease yeah. scene at the end of the homecoming oh, was have that guy in the, the jail. Scorpion like, tattoo, right? Yeah. So who knows? Go, I don't You got know. the list in front of you, or do you know the list by heart? Of what? what? The Sinister Six? Who they are, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it right here. I, mean, I think you just, didn't you just read most of it? I just, I did just read most of it. Um, Ooh, get my mouse to work I don't know. Out. I sort of got the vibe he was sort of, I don't know, I, I. I don't think they're going to build towards a Sinister Six, but they might run through those classic villains, which I would, I would appreciate. Right. Well, except they already sort of did Doc Ock, so they might not use him. Yes, yeah, so we've got Electro, Mysterio, Doc Ock, Vulture, Sandman, and Craven the Hunter. Yeah, so I don't know. I think Craven the Hunter wouldn't be a bad one. You'd have to de cheese him a little bit. Yeah, but, he's super uh, cheesy wearing uh, like a fur vest and yeah, and showing his pecs. Tight. If your wife, wife, if you ever like look at like the ultra, I mean, he's wearing like tights and like ballerina sandals. He, and, he, like, he'd be like Sinister oh, Six, yeah. as in my six pack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Played by Dwayne Johnson, The yeah. Rock. Yeah, some yeah. of these heroes were invented in the sixties, and they were a little flamboyant back then. So we, anyway, some of them come out a little weird in their. Digital. But they have. To they have their credit, films. they they have taken characters that are very cheesy. Like think about the vulture. The vulture's in a leotard that's green with a little, you know, feather uh, neck Collar, thing. You yeah. know what I mean? I would have yeah, If dude, someone and, had told me we're going to put the vulture as the villain, I would have been like, eh, maybe let's rethink it. But because he's like an older, he's supposed to be an old man in the comics, right. and mm-hmm. and I mean, and, I mean, I think there's often jokes in there, but I'm being a senior citizen and still fighting and stuff, but. Yeah. But they took an, a, a little bit of a more mature actor, uh, Michael Keaton, and made him an awesome. Villain. He's old. You can yeah. Say Vulture it. was yeah. Vulture was a very c- compelling yeah, villain yeah. in Homecoming, and they, uh, they got the look kind of right with the the jacket pilot jacket, with, like a bomber fur, jacket, without yeah. going cr- silly with the mm-hmm. feathers and stuff. Right? I mean, they had the look without it being silly. I mean, and those they, claw legs totally worked. They got it made it. sense. That you, yeah. It was useful for the. Uh, they the crushed character. it. Let's just say they get, they nailed it. <laughs> <Yeah>. Totally. <laughs> Still waiting on them to release an awesome toy of that yeah, suit, yeah, which was yeah. amazing. But yeah, so I gotta ask, Nathaniel, mm-hmm. you you are the villain guy. 
of the spider villain man villains we've just listed, do you have a favorite? Oh man! Well, hold on. Let's, so, what's if we what what are, what are in the Spider Man? Are you talking about the entire Spider Man universe yeah. or the movies? So, okay, yeah. of the ones I, I kind of listed as main ones there. <sighs> That's hard. I mean, I have always been a little bit partial to Doc Ock just because of the the aesthetics of it and everything, and then uh, different origin stories that I've read at least is sort of deep in that that it wasn't uh, it wasn't initially intentional per se. Um, so I've, I've always liked him, Sandman, pretty awesome, but I don't, I don't know if I could pick, uh, like a number one, you know what I mean? And part of it is portrayal, right? Like, Mm -hmm. honestly, probably could have gone a different direction with the cinematic universe introduction of Rhino that we had, Uh, (laughs) you know what I mean? So that would be something I complain about a little bit. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. So it's, it's a portrayal thing and the jury's still out on whatever this future Venom portrayal will ultimately be. So my favorite Spider-Man villain is uh, Thanos. (laughs) Thanos. (laughs) Well played. We had to fit it in there somewhere, folks. (laughs) The (laughs) Infinity War podcast. But Dave, you've read more Spider-Man in, uh, whether in the books or in the movies, you got a favorite villain that, uh, I think I go or... pretty classic. I really like Doc Ock. A lot. I also like Green Goblin because he is uh, he's like a little bit cra- like the character of Norman Osborn yeah. and, uh, as Green Goblin is very good because he's compelling. He's like this cross of like int- he's almost it didn't quite have it, but he's almost maybe a version of the Joker because he's a little, like crazy. Yeah, when he's uh, but also like when he's, super intelligent when he gives in to the yeah, Green Goblin when he gives psyche, in to it, he's like crazy. Yeah, like, uh, chaos. But then he's also like chaos, intelligent. Yeah. He's got the resource, you know, sometimes he's able to work himself into the good graces of people sometimes. And, we're, you know, Oscorp, owning Oscorp, he's almost it, like a Lex Luthor. It's almost like too. you smash Joker and Batman together. And you yeah. got the Green Goblin. Maybe, maybe, Plus he can maybe shred Joker and Lex Luthor glider. together. Maybe. Yeah, he can shred. He can do it yeah. on the, yeah. He can shred. I mean. Yeah. And he, play, he tends to play mind games with Spider-Man too sometimes, you know, just all that. He's just a, he really, he pushes Spider-Man. And I, I it, his storylines with him are very compelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. So I got when I was a kid, um, I was uh, loved, you know, superhero stuff and movies and all the stuff. My, you know very well, like um, Superman or Star Wars was my super duper thing. But when I got into superheroes, my favorite superhero was Spider Man. And one of the things that I instantly found compelling about him was that he didn't fly, like everybody else's mm. favorite superhero. Flew, and then the more I learned about, it was like, well, everybody flies is just kind of lame. I want, but the way he web slinged and how he was awesome without like the over like super gamma blast of this or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It got me interested in him. And then the more I read about him, I realized like he's got the same problems, I, you know, real problems. And I related to him so well. Like he had a hard time paying his rent and, you know, kids at school, you know, whatever the storyline was, like he, I did relate to him and mm-hmm. life was hard. And he's stressed out. He experiences stress, which yes. real people do. When you're, you're like, in, and you when worry you, about the, when I was Spider- in, Superman doesn't worry about anything. Yeah, right. I mean, why would he? Right, yeah. <laughs> He's the man of steel, right? But so, like, and, and this was high school, late junior high, early high school, and and who's not stressed out at that formative time in your life? So I just, mm-hmm. I just identified with him yeah. that way, you know. Plus, you go back to the uh, the web slinging looks so awesome, right? Who yeah. who doesn't want to just go like that yeah. with their <laughs> the fingers and just mm, have that happen? It looks so it looks so awesome. Yeah. After and honestly, after reading that comic and seeing how he did the thing, I would like practice being able to put those two fingers into yeah. my palm. Yeah, so, you know what I'm saying, like. Can I stretch my fingers that way? Okay. So, anyways, I totally fell with him that he was kind of the untraditional but awesome hero, yeah. right? He didn't fly, he didn't have super blast powers or or whatever, and kind of also uh, blue collar a little bit. Like he built his own web shooters. Like also, in, in, for those of you who don't know, when Corliss was young, he was bitten by a radioactive turtle. So. <laughs> It just resonated immediately. It just with resonated. Him when he read yes. Spider-Man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. It's funny you say that. I was bitten by a very mean uh, German Shepherd, actually. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> uh-huh. That explains the fur. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so I, I love that non-traditionalism about Spider-Man. Now, the movie that really started this revolution, why we got to give Spider-Man the credit, is that started, the to me, the beginning of superheroes being cool and awesome it, for the it, uh, for the world at large not just the nerd group right was that first movie toby Maguire, spider-man 
that was the first one that had general appeal and can everybody I, liked I, it. Did, did X-Men this? come first? Can I ask this? What's that? Did X-Men come first? That's what I was just about to say. Did the, X, the first X-Men movie come out? Because I that was one too. Yeah. Those, um. but, but that was the era. Those those are the those were the era. But like everybody went to go watch like like my dad watched it. My mom, like they actually got them to go watch a superhero yeah. movie. And it's like, yeah, I really liked it and all that stuff. And I think we all kind of look at history through the scope of our own experience. So maybe there was something that made it real. But, but for me, that was like you could talk about a nerd something with the general. Hey, have you seen that movie? Yeah. And there was a chance that they actually would see it and say that they liked it. And we're like, no, I didn't watch that because I'm not a loser. You know what I'm <laughs> like, whereas now it's like, I, you know, yeah. you could say I'm a nerd, but I wear it with a badge of pride. Like the most popular thing in the world right now is MCU, is Star Wars. This is right. what's the coolest thing out there yeah. right now is the stuff. But that first movie did it. And I think it was let me, let me say very well made. Go ahead. X Men 2000, Spider Man 2002. So oh, okay, so close. it was right very there. close. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, for for X Men to me, like that was, it didn't cross that barrier. Maybe yeah. it did, but in my little world, it didn't. It was it was Spider Man that seemed to cross it. But. I, was, I think X Men got the ball rolling. Spider Man gave it its momentum. Yeah, I think it, yeah. Really we could say that. Yeah. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and I love how that first one starts out. This story, like any stories worth telling, is all about a girl, right? And and a kid. Which makes it relatable for a kid who's in high school or whatever. He's got a crush, right? Super relatable. And so the story, they get it right. The story is not about him getting powers, right? It's the story of his life, the life that is an average Joe kid growing up in New York. And that's, that's how they sell the story. And we all, we all get caught into it. Um, now my, which is weird that I'm saying that because my favorite in the comics is when he's not attached to a girl. <laughs> it's just, doing other stuff protecting aunt may or, or doing whatever where he's uninhibited that way because uh but but that movie is so great so iconic you've got the upside down kiss scene right that's like still today a thing where he's mm-hmm. upside down and he kisses mary jean for the first time after saving her from getting mugged right and th- then go into spider-man 2 and then, oh and the villain in that first one was green goblin mm-hmm. right yep. totally mm-hmm. messing with his head doing all the, those different you know different things then we've got the doc ock um, one in the next one where to me in that one that was like if I fell in love with Spider-Man like yes this was so and and for the first time they could do wall wall, wall crawling and web slinging without it looking super lame mm-hmm. let me tell you what always bugged me <clears throat> the special effects caught up with any the scene where he's doing wall crawling he's partially suited and he's got sneakers on I'm like how does that work how are your sneakers adhering to the wall I don't not, think, does not making contact. Sne- does he have sneakers on in AC? I know he'll take. Ins- he'll have maybe socks not that on. specific movie, but I've I've definitely seen like he has some sort of footwear you know, under the yeah, suit. Yeah, like there's a there's a surface between him and the surface, and I'm like, mm, oh, wait a second now. I don't know. That's just one of those things. Why does Hulk's pants stay on? I don't. You know, I just <laughs> I just I just let it go. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you're right. You're I mean, it does bother I me. Mean, it it <laughs> I feel like there's a little bit of. I give him leeway. Like if it's a thin sock or booty, I will give them that. If he has full on tennis shoes on. That sort of that debugs me. Like, like I don't know if people if people love Spider Man, they've probably yeah. seen the trailers for the Spider Verse movie that's coming out uh-huh. soon. Um, and one of these scenes shows Miles Morales sitting on the side of a building, but he has his Jordans on. I'm like, mm, that would be one, yeah. Mm, that bothers me like that. Yeah, but it's just one of those things they don't ever explain why he might he have a different stick. power set. I don't remember. Yeah, what who knows? Power. But anyways, so uh, Spider Man Two comes along. We got the Doctor Octopus story. Uh, Doc Ock from Otto Octavius, yeah, trying to invent this new science or whatever, and um, that whole movie is like awesome. life dropping a major poop on poor Peter Parker. I mean, there I watched it again recently with my son, and uh, yeah, that is just I like I really enjoy the movie, and I because I really it really captures the yeah, yeah that one came the, out like two thousand four. It was an old two, movie, yeah, it's two thousand three, two thousand four. Okay. It's a while ago. Um, yeah. yeah, I still really loved it. Um, the special effects even still really are really good. Uh, mm-hmm. The uh, yeah, he just has a bad thing. Even there's a scene when he is hired by J. Jonah Jameson to go take pictures at this party that he's having, and oh, like, yeah. even at that party, like successive, like he. Tell, Tessa tells Mary Jane that he likes her a lot and she kind of blows him off and is like, no, I have this boyfriend now. And then the next scene, she's a, the guy asked her to marry him and she says, yes. Yeah, yeah. And then he tries to get a drink Nick. from the tray immediately after that. The drink is empty yeah. and then he puts it back. I, I think he tries to put it back, but he can't like something fall, bad happens. Yeah, then Harry Osborne walks up to him and tells him he hates him now. And his, smacks Who's him. his best friend in the movies yeah. has supported him through everything and now tell, slaps him in the face like several in times public, yeah. in public and yells at him. So it's like, like stuff that would send anybody home crying. <laughs> like, Best party yeah. ever. Yeah. 
<laughs> it's all this stuff. And then right after that, Jane, 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 Jonah Jameson starts yelling at him because he's not taking pictures. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like real life stuff, right? Yeah. They make you buy into the character, right? Yeah, it's right? so much bad stuff, which the way I said it there makes it probably sound awful, but it is, it's what happens to Spider-Man and it's, it's terrible and it's kind of endearing and you want so bad for him to win. Yeah. And yet when he puts on the, the suit and becomes Spider-Man, it's somewhat therapeutic for him to do the right thing or whatever. He starts having a hard time, loses his power, yeah. and goes through that whole losing my power but you can thing see it's he's very, so stressed out. Yeah, it affects he's, him. He's so and he com- still has to make the right decision. Just because he had a bad day doesn't yeah. mean that he's going to get... The press is going to be nice to him, right? It's, yeah, and it's... Uh, I, so I enjoy this movie. I'm probably going to talk too much about it, but... Uh, because he goes through the conflicts and everybody, you're, you're giving so much of yourself to do something that you think is right. Mm-hmm. And then he starts suffering in other parts of his life, right? And that happens in the movie and he starts thinking, I got to give up. I got to, I can't, I can't help other people. I got to help myself. Yeah. Right. That, and he goes through that, that journey. Probably, I don't know where or it falls the refusal into that, of the adventure, right? Where, where he, finally, he does say, I'm Again, not, not going to be that anymore. Yeah. Well, that would even fit into other phases than that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I'm not, yeah. I'm not sure the whole. I'm going to make it or whatever. But he, but yeah. and, he, and he goes through that, that journey of I'm giving it up and then he realizing, like, I, I cannot do this. I, I have to be selfless. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I just, yeah, the whole movie goes through this. That, yeah. It's, yeah. It's some it's awesome well, stuff. Well-made movie. So I went back and I watched, of all the Spider-Man movies, the one that I think I enjoyed the least. I watched it again prior to watching this movie. Spider-Man 3, the last one Tobey Maguire did, I think they were... Try to do another between him having a sore back and not liking the script or something. They didn't make another one, but because yeah. um, he apparently hurt his back doing all those that wire work, they have him yeah. jumping around. Or something I heard like too. That. I read too that Sam Raimi, the director, really wanted to do it because three wasn't well received. He wanted to go out on a high note, but the studio was really rushing him to get something done and trying to be a little more heavy handed in the story. So he yeah. just said, "I'm not. No, I'm, I'm going to make a great Spider-Man movie. I'm not going to make one." And then, and because of interference, he Listen said, up, "We're BC. not." <laughs> He, bing, bing, bing. And then, and, he, and, beca- and all of that, he couldn't make this tell story he wanted, so he said, well, "I'm not, I'm not doing it." Then. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. So, in that movie, I'm watching this movie, and it was like the first hour. I'm like, "Why did I think this movie was terrible? This is actually the Sandman character was super good and super well done." I'm like, "Why were, why did I not like this movie?" And then all of a sudden, Tobey Maguire gets the black suit, and he <laughs> turns into selfish Toby, selfish Peter Parker and his hair and, bounch, bow, bow, and he does this whole little dance scene and, bounch, bow, bow, oh, and he's painful bow, yeah gun mm-hmm. shooting and hey ladies and it's just like uh that's just dumb not bad Peter Parker right? so I'm like Spider-Man. ah it's coming back now why yeah. this was weird and then to mm-hmm. me that's somewhat I mean, lighthearted comic book nerdy whatever okay I could almost look past that but then Foreman from that 70s show becomes Venom. And you're like, has there ever been in the history of bad casting a worse <laughs> casting for the Venom character? Yeah. I mean, think about they're They're teasing the new Venom movie coming out yeah. with uh, what's his name? Hardy. Tom Hardy. Tom yeah. Hardy. Such a cool actor. Could that portrayal from that trailer be any different yeah. than the Venom that we see? Because in the comic books those were the that was just coming out when i first got exposed to um spider-man comic books as a kid and that venom character was terrifying Mm -hmm. and it was so cool because he had learned like it showed it first got learned the the symbiote learned spider-man's powers and then gave those powers to the next guy who came along um brock whatever his name is and so spider-man's biggest thing that always makes him hard for villains to get him is his spider sense like he can always dodge what they throw at him because his spider sense warns him but the spider sense doesn't work against venom right and so it was like plot twist and i'm like oh my gosh and and it was really scary and venom was totally terrifying and freakish and all that stuff and let me just tell you that kid from that 70s show was none of those things yeah (laughs) i don't really remember the venom very much just like the the dark scene where he's transforming or whatever it's incredibly that, forgettable yeah, whatever yeah, yeah he goes to a church and prays to god for god to kill peter parker so like that makes zero sense you, you yeah. pray to somebody else for murder right yeah. <laughs> like what are you doing but anyways yeah, yeah. so and, and then it just becomes too much they've got the hobgoblin showing up his friend and and the sandman was still super cool the characters the whole time yeah. and and it just be, this between the symbiote and venom and sandman and now the hobgoblin it just it was just it was just rushed, right? Yeah. yeah. So you're right. I, I don't know what fell apart exactly. Is something in there? Just yeah, uh, that dude is Venom was not my favorite at all. Yeah. My respect for Tobey Maguire mostly is what fell yeah. apart. 
I think <laughs> Tobin Maguire did as good a job as anybody can do. I mean, I still think. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I'd have to. I'd have to. I'd have a tough time. I'd have to really examine it. But he's Andrew Garfield is my least favorite Spider Man. I will say that. So I, I I can't say that Tom Holland is my favorite Spider Man. I'd have to really think about it. But it might still be Tobin Maguire. So okay. So Andrew Garfield. The next one's come come out. The Amazing Spider Man. I love those movies, and it's this isn't. I need I'm to gonna tell a, you why you're wrong. In a okay, minute. Right, I, I will need it because because oh. I know Dave is Captain Source Material, right? And they do some party fouls in the Source Material. Captain Source Material, <laughs> <laughs> and they do some things different in the Amazing Spider-Man um, one and two, where Spider-Man is kind of uh, cool instead of a nerd, right? Uh, he uh, has a whole skating montage to Coldplay. Yeah, that, ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, so, which was cool and fun, but so I just. Um, I just I found the movies really fun. I I just fi- found myself very very entertained with those the Andrew Garfield ones. Um, I loved. I think my favorite scene in any of the Star Wars, Star Wars. Gosh, there I go again. Spider Man movies, whether it's Homecoming or Spider Man One, Two, Three, or Amaz- Amazing One and Two, is the relationship that he has with Gwen Stacy in the in an Amazing Spider Man One Two. That's why I like that rendition the best. His really the Andrew Garfield and I can, I'm so bad with names. The gal playing uh, Gwen Stacy, who they yeah. actually were even dating for a while. Um, their relationship, it, yeah, <laughs> forget. Thank you. What's her name? <laughs> their relationship was so well done. I believed in the relationship. I was rooting for their relationship, See, which is weird. So I feel weird, like cause I, I feel, feel like I'm swinging from the other side of the plate, saying things like that. But like, I love their relationship in those movies. And then when she dies. Almost like in the comic books where she's falling, he does the web shooting, and it's going, he gets her, it saves her in time before she hits the ground, but her head still snaps down and hits the ground. So it's like she's, he catches her like a foot or two before his, and the ground goes, <laughs> swacking her, eat crack, and she's, I didn't she think dies. it was a head hitting the ground, I thought it was her back breaking. He caught her no, in well, the front. It did, it he caught her in the her front, back. but everything snapped, but you see her head hit the ground. Uh, watch. It's, right. it, it's like, oh! And you feel I it. thought it was a watermelon that somebody dropped. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's that scene, even though that relationship and that death was handled so well and, and moved me that I overlooked the kind of odd representation that they gave the Green Goblin character when, when they did that. Like, it was almost just like, that's just weird kind of a... All right, oh, you've the, made your case for it. The Goblin yeah. version in, in, in that one, right? You didn't like him, right? Yeah, I mean, he, yeah. yeah, he's awful. But, yeah. Well, do, do you have thoughts you want to share upon it? I'm waiting to hear your rebuttal. The gentleman from Texas yields the floor. <laughs> mm-hmm. The court the recognizes... The senator from Louise, Alabama. Um, Louise, Alabama. <laughs> all right. Let me, so let me talk about why it's terrible. <laughs> First of all, he's not even Spider-Man that much in the movie. He spends a lot of time being jerk Peter Parker. And I have a problem with that. He's kind of a jerk in the movie. And Peter yeah. Parker is the nicest of nice guys. Yeah. He's a nice man. And in this movie, he's very selfish. He makes promises to Captain Stacy that he immediately breaks, which Peter Parker would not do. And he even says some stupid line like, the best promises is the one you can't keep. Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, so that's awful of him. Yeah. And he does all of that at knowing that it's going to put her in danger. Which is the opposite of the best Spider-Man movie, Spider-Man 2. He, no matter what, no matter how bad he wants to, he stays away from Mary Jane. Even at the end of the movie, when you think, oh, he's got the girl. He's got it. He still says, you have to go be with that other guy. I, you'll always be danger, in danger around me. So sorry. And then she has to leave and she runs back to the end. That's how the movie ends. She runs. She l- runs away from her wedding in mm-hmm. her wedding dress and says, this is my choice to make, not yours. Yeah, you're not the only one who gets to choose. Yeah. yeah. And so it and that's how it should be, not screw you, Dad. Even though my actions got him killed earlier in the movie, I'm still gonna put me with you, even though your my actions will probably get you killed, which they do. Yeah. Um Let me tell you why it was worth listening to this podcast for you guys. I don't think I've ever heard you say with so much passion, he is a nice man. <laughs> <laughs> so eat it. <laughs> also, the movie does not address at all. Uncle Ben's death, the defining moment that makes him become <sighs> Spider-Man. The, the, whole, the two series is terrible. It's like they go out of their way not to say, yeah, exactly. with great power comes great responsibility. Because they, exactly. like, they don't yeah. want to have everyone to see the word rehash. It's like, dude, get over it. We know it, you're rehashing. Rehash is it. the same yeah. laundry joke from Spider-Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> That's lame. Weak writing. Nuh-uh. Uh, laundry sheriff. 
I love that line. Uh, <laughs> Use that one around have, the house. Trust me, your wife the, will like it. The rhino <laughs> shows up in the movie briefly, and he's an awesome mm. villain, and they 100% waste him. They hired, uh, what's that actor's name? He's Paul Giamatti to be in that movie for nothing. Yeah, seriously. That dude so, is a good actor. Yeah. 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 You could tell Use he was him. having fun doing his version of Rhino, yeah. but I was like, underwhelmed. Um, yeah. Also, Peter Parker, we just established earlier, he's supposed to be a very intelligent person. In the movie, they sort of make him out to be stupid. He's banging his head against the wall trying to figure out the mystery of his parents' death, which has no bearing on the plot at all. So why is that even in there? Well, be, yeah. that's the direction they were going to take the plot, like that the, his parents' death was somehow nefarious. But I like... One thing. Let, hold on. Counterpoint. Does he yield the floor? I'm gonna. I'm gonna say something that maybe you'll want to change what you say. So it, it is in there. The whole point of that plot is to establish that they had done something special to Peter Parker's DNA. That he was the only one that could be Spider-Man, which is counter to the entire idea of Spider-Man. Spider-Man is supposed to be representative of all of any of us could have become Spider-Man. Spider-Man is an everyday kid. Yeah, who has challenges like everybody else, but happens to have this event happen to him. And now he has to struggle to make the right choice every day, which he does. It's very difficult. And this movie undoes that undoes that by saying, uh, well, he was the only one that could do it. He is special. He's more special. You could never be Spider-Man because your parents didn't change your DNA like his did. So he's not an everyday person. He's special. Boom. Mic drop. This concludes our who <laughs> yeah. would win. Yeah. <laughs> Spider-Man versus no, Spider-Man. I just didn't feel that way about that. I mean, I guess... There, that's a valid point. I, yeah, I want to yeah. say that I one thing I like better in Amazing, you said they don't make him very smart. In The Amazing Spider-Man with Andrew Garfield, he invents the web shooters. Rather than the Tobey Maguire series, he just accidentally moves his hand a weird way and it shoots out of his wrist. He never has to invent the web shooters. Uh, I think Gwen Stacy helps him invent them because he's too dumb. No, she helps him figure out how to not have his his the things get ruined by Electro's. Um, oh, that's right. That's right. He has to watch, that's right. He watches a YouTube video to figure out how batteries work. So yeah, he is pretty smart. <laughs> All right, you invent a web they shooter. They store okay. electricity. <laughs> Tell me more, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> You're so effusive with your love of those movies. Uh, I just feel right. like it's contagious. They undo. The character of Spider-Man. Oh, well, let me just say, I don't know. Yeah, I. You're not wrong. I, but I never really liked the uh, Mary Jane character in the comics and the representation that um, Kirsten Dunst gives in those original ones. I never, like, dude, I was a little kid. I fell in love with uh, Betty Rubble and Mrs. Jetson. I, I would just like fall in love with any female depicted on TV, like little crushes as a little mm-hmm. kid. And I'm, when I watched, Mary, I just no attraction to Kirsten Dunst. Well, I don't know. I, why. She I just agree. doesn't do it for, for. So in the comics, lovely Mary, gal. I have the, no idea. In, but in the comics, Mary Jane Watson's supposed to be like a, a, a beautiful. Yeah, like, she's shocking, a shockingly like, yes, like yeah, very beautiful. But uh, and, and uh, I don't know if Kirsten Dunst. Uh, she's a pretty gal. Yeah, she's very I lovely. Very lovely. I, it's just, I, I don't know if she to me. I would say I don't think she was the perfect person to play Mary Jane. I will say that. But I think that she plays it. I think she plays the person right. I don't she even, plays yeah, the character of yeah, Mary Jane. I don't right. think that she necessarily plays it wrong, but the way it's written, I don't believe in them as a couple as much as I believed in Gwen Stacy and Andrew Garfield Spider Man. Like I believe this is a pe- these two belong together. Like the way they're, I just liked that better. Like you want them because Spider Man has a crush on Mary Jane, so you want them to end up because you like Spider Man. But like their chemistry, their whatever. See, I, I, guess, I guess it's all taste because I felt one hundred percent the reverse. Like I said, I feel like okay, well, they yeah, so, were. Yeah, I felt like fine. they were so yeah. awkward. You, I felt like they were there. I felt like every time it was like. Yeah, I it, I felt like every, the, all of okay. the interactions in the movies were very awkward. Right? I felt like theirs was very realistic. These people that are not full adults yet, so they're still maturing. And he likes her, but he can't, so he's trying to hide it. And she does develop a. a she realizes, oh, I do. I have a. I have strong feelings for Peter Parker, but I. She needs him to admit that when he can't, she moves on, like I think a real person would. And uh, I don't know. I so, just it, it's kind of it's a back and forth. And you're like, I hope. When are they yeah. going to line up? When will they both realize that they love yeah. each other? Well, let's I, move, I let's, like that more. Let's move on to the current rendition of cinematic rendition here with Tom Holland playing in Homecoming. Okay. Okay. Um, huge success with the Target fan base. I think uh, my kids who are in high school they absolutely loved it. Their friends also all really really liked it. Which which means they connected with. 
the everyday man part with he's a kid in high school. Yeah. So the kids in high school need to identify with him. Yeah. Right. And so they connected with the audience. Appropriately. I feel like I feel like we didn't get an opinion about the two. Oh, yeah. Are, Do you want, from that who would win? Who would win? Andrew from, Garfield, from Spider-Man versus Don't Tobey Maguire. Don't choose between you guys. <laughs> Uh, it's been a while since I saw them. Um, you don't have to pick between us. I just want to hear your... The first two Tobey Maguire movies, I'm right there with you guys. Like Very good. Solid, solid movies. And I remember enjoying the Andrew Garfield movies. But kind of like what you said, you're not wrong. Like Your points are incredibly valid. Yeah. And I think that if for some reason he had continued, you probably would have seen a little bit of backlash and whatever from the fan base. I like, think they, I think there was some backlash because they planned on there being an amazing Spider-Man yeah. three, and they realized we can't do it. Everybody hates him. Yeah, but and I, I, I was irritated with yeah, things like the Rhino choice too, and I'm not even like that in you know yeah. dialed in. So yeah, I, I think uh, that probably dovetails nicely into the fact that my personal favorite is the current is Tom Holland. Okay, well yeah, let's go. On I now. will say I think he does the best version of being Tobey Maguire was a better nerd. Mm-hmm. Andrew Garfield was the did a better job at the witty banter Spider Man. Tobey Maguire is the best meshing of them two. Tobey yeah. Maguire's? Uh, Tom Holland, sorry. Tom, Tom Holland, Holland is okay. doing the best. Like yeah. When he's Peter Parker, he's kind of a nerd. When he's Spider-Man, he's got the banter and stuff. They're writing him very right. well. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this might sound nitpicky, but just in my head, and maybe it's just in my head, but uh, Tobey Maguire, just like sli- slightly too stocky. That was one thing I appreciated about Andrew Garfield. He's a wiry, kind of skinny de- guy. Mm-hmm. I know, felt like the, he was the current guy, wiry, kind of skinny. Yeah, I feel like Tom Holland fits that because Tom. Well, Andrew Garfield is too skinny. I feel like almost, but he, he's tall and lanky. Uh, very tall. Yeah, yeah. If you go through the different iterations of how Spider Man's look, there's been lanky versions of. Them. Sometimes he looks very wiry, and sometimes he looks yeah. full. Full. Sometimes fit, he like looks decathlete. Sometimes he yeah. looks wiry and flexible. Sometimes he looks like Schwarzenegger. I mean, yeah, yeah. Is, sometimes you know. so the different so they both for visually they in both my work mind for Tom Holland grows up to be Andrew Garfield like you know as he gets older like the the adult Spider Man tall and, and lanky and probably when he was in high school Tom Holland. So what do you like about the Tom Holland version? He has a very uh, uh, natural sort of. He's nailing that high school naivete, like just this razor's edge of being uh kind of like ham-fisted and an awkward but also very likable you know what i mean and just sort of it's it's hard to describe exactly but there's all these moments where you're like he's coming like super close almost like to being too good of an actor to nailing this too well mm-hmm. he doesn't quite go over that line you know what i mean like mm-hmm. he's just mm-hmm. he's unsure of himself it's like this perfect balance of insecurity and his his delivery i mean it's just uh, think about that that scene I was talking about in uh, Civil War, you know what I mean? Like when he's interacting with all of them, it's just like, yes, this is exactly what an inexperienced high school kid dealing with this stuff would probably sound with like. The proper yeah. Peter Parker personality. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious just, if he is yeah. that good because he, he seems to be a very good actor. Is he that or is the director just that? Is that good of a director? I'm, I'd be curious to know where the weight lies. He's but pretty he's good. I've it. actually seen a couple other films with him in it, non Spider Man films. And uh, he is, he's pretty good. He's probably got a uh, bright future. Yeah, he's so. one of those guys that is older. He's like 24, 25 now, actually. He's actually... So he's playing, he's depicting a kid who's in his sophomore year in in high school, but he's actually 20-something. Uh, I looked it up. So I was like, wow, okay. Uh, he's really nailing it good. I, I when he, Where Tom Holland nails it to me is the interaction with his buddy. Like, oh God, I just got the Death Star. Let's build it. And they're like building the Lego Death Star. I'm like... Yeah yes right mm-hmm. like that's what like the nerd of this generation does right yeah. and they don't have yeah. a you know a, re- a rector set that they're building yeah. but it's like legos right they're, yeah it's a yeah. and, and it definitely connects with the audience there mm-hmm. and really really good um isn't there a scene though when his friend comes up like i got half done we gotta finish building and it's like in high school people around he's like oh what are you talking about i don't build legos <laughs> is this there some scene where he acts very awkward like, Shh, like that <laughs> come over and play we hang out yeah yeah like, something some, yeah. yeah that's that's awesome <laughs> I, I love that yeah his his friend is a very great wingman compliment in Homecoming as well. I want to be your yeah. man in the chair. Like I want to be your man in the chair. Deal. So I feel like they stole that wingman from the Ultimate Comics version of Spider Man, which we'll talk about later. So there's been lots of TV versions of Spider Man that have been out, and the one that's been most successful, like my kids watch them. I've seen a lot of the the Ultimate Spider Man. There's been these different iterations, and the one that's been getting the most traction that I think's had the most episodes or seasons. Don't quote me on that. Is this Ultimate Spider Man version where he's a young Spider Man who's getting taken under the wing by Shield. 
and to become they're trying to groom him into being like a full blown superhero. And his buddies in the that one is like Power Man, the White Tiger, and Nova. And they just have all sorts of adventures, but he's still a high school kid throughout it. And the, that's the version that they took. It's like that was their pilot. This was really successful. Let's do that in the cinematic when we introduce him in this Marvel Cinematic Universe. Let's do this teenage uh, Spider Man because it works so good. And it does, which is weird. I'm saying this. I really do enjoy the current version of Spider Man, but I'm surp- I find myself surprised saying that because my favorite version of Spider Man is adult Spider Man. Yeah. I don't like the comic book versions mm-hmm. when he's in high school. When I was in high school, I didn't want to be in high school. I wanted to be out of high school. So don't take me back to high school, right? Mm-hmm. So like, I, that's not my favorite for me. You know, for me. Yeah. Now that it's wrong, it's just it's just not my favorite. But the, it was genius to put him as um, a teenager in the movie series because it, even though he's um, a white kid, it adds diversity um, to the cinematic universe in that. I remember too many superhero movies or comic books like, why is it everyone who has superpowers is in their physical and chronological prime? They're all in their late 20s and early 30s. Like, not everyone's going to be the same age and have superpowers, right? Right. Like, it's ridiculous. So, it... Having him be young ha- in, in a character, it adds diversity to the por- Marvel Cinematic Universe portfolio because he's a young kid, and you got this spectrum now. Tony Stark really is much older, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish they hadn't made him quite so young personally. I mean, I know they they have their story. Yeah, time I was whatever, vastly but deflated I, when they said I, sophomore year. Yeah, at the I end. was like, oh, <laughs> that means I have several more years. I mean, I guess they could skip ahead in the comics, like they want if they're in the movies if they want to. There's no, yeah, yeah. They don't have to go year by year for a movie, but. uh um, I thought to myself, oh, does that mean we have one or two more movies of high school Peter Parker still? Because I'm, I like adult Peter Parker. Yeah. Hey, it works so well. They did it with Groot too. So that's true. <laughs> true. Sending them back. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one of my favorite scenes from the amazing Spider-Man homecoming is the interaction when the dad who realizes where he knows Peter Parker from. Oh, the drive in the Driving car? Driving in the car. Oh, that is such a good scene. Dude, my, like, my heart stopped when he opens the door and the vulture oh, yeah, opens man. the yeah. door. I was like, oh, I did not was see like, that coming. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a second. What's happening? <gasps> what's, what's going on? What's happening? Like that. Yeah, yeah. It's like, play cool, play cool, play and then, cool. Again, like the drive in the car. Oh, it is so, so you feel the tension and the sweat because yeah. you can feel like sweat is rolling and down Michael Keaton, hey, and sugar would you leave i just gonna have the dad talk with spider-man yeah he's like pulls out the glock and he's like yeah this is the worst dad talk in the history of <laughs> yeah. ever yeah. <laughs> yeah gotta have the vulture talk you yeah. know the one. Yeah. <laughs> so that that part is so yeah, intense it's, and it's and it's real you both of the characters act in a way that makes sense vulture's like look you saved my daughter's life and i'm not gonna forget that but he's also like villain. He's like, look, I didn't kill you. I just saved your life. What do you have to say about that? What do you have to say? Uh, thank you, sir. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's he's super villainy. He's, yeah. he's like, my point is intimidating you. He's not a one dimensional ba- ba- yes. villain. It's like, I just want to kill people. That's I'm a bad guy. I kill people. You I can tell people. he's like, <laughs> I, don't know what they're wanting. I, I do have other things. I yeah. will kill you, but I do have other yeah. goals. Look, and I, I just saved your life. What are you going to say about that? Uh, yeah. Thank you, yeah. sir. Right. And then Peter Parker is like, he's just a high school kid freaking out. Like, oh my gosh, what do I do? He leaves, goes in, and you realize he freaking genius move leaves his cell phone in there so he can track the vulture to wherever he's mm-hmm. going because he knows he's up to something. Gets his buddy man in the chair. Yeah, because uh, he's actually a genius. He didn't have to look it up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So super good, right? That whole they. But they again, do I it love it again. That it goes back to those hard choices he has to make, which is like, um, I'm here with this girl I'm in love with at this dance, and I do had I to stay leave. here? He had and to take, ditch her. I mean, it would be easier to stay with this attractive girl and dance and spend the night here, or spend the evening here with this girl, or I can make the hard choice and leave and go find, find a supervillain. Yeah. And he makes the hard right. I'm choice. fully expecting the movie to go for him being awkward for like the whole dance. Like, yeah. Oh my gosh, we're not, just like. You know, flop sweating yeah. the whole time, and she's being like, "What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you?" And he's, and she gets upset, and that's his excuse to leave. But he like immediately ditches her. I'm like, "Whoa, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh... wow!" But, but that and that was that was Peter Parker appropriate. Like that, mm-hmm. that was good. That was appropriate. Yeah. And then the fight, the Vulture brings the building down, and and he, if the the ethos has to be compelling for the movie and the storytelling to be good, he's got the building crushed on him. 
Vulture brings down the ceiling, right? You haven't touched me with the wings yet. Wasn't aiming for you. <laughs> the ceiling falls down on Peter Parker. And now, and he's wearing his old suit, right? Because yeah, his hoodie and sweat took short, sweatpants. Yeah. Yeah. And, he's like, and he sees in reflection. If, if, if the suit is all that you are, then you're never worthy of the suit. And he like has to dig down really deep to get himself. I feel like coming from Iron Man, that's a little hypocritical, though. Don't you? Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> sound that way. I mean, if he had to get out of that cave in Iron Man One without the suit, he'd be in the cave still. Yeah. Mm, I suppose. But he was not. He was something without it, and then he made it the suit. But yeah, anyways, I, anyway, I took it to be an illusion to Iron Man Three, where he's the mechanic. He's with the kid and the oh, shed. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Improvise I don't really remember Iron Man Three that much. I didn't like that movie that much. I rewatched it recently. Curmudgeon strikes again. Okay, so <laughs> he's got the building. Curmudgeon powers <laughs> activate. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he gets the building off of him and then he makes that this is like quintessential superhero hard right he fights the vulture at great peril to his own body because the vulture is going to steal he's going to rob tony stark blind from avenger level power stuff like you find out that hulk's a bunch of arc reactors yes, and hulk's, uh, uh, really uh, thor's thing. belt or something yes, yeah. yes he's gonna rob tony stark blind as they're moving avengers out. and he not only does he fight him on a jet plane for goodness sakes that's completely out of his element like he needs tall building around and stuff to web off of and he, he does all that and then they crash he's they're totally beat the snot out of each other vulture still trying to steal something also say amen right now if you could not see what was happening at all in the theater i didn't even know what happened in that fight scene on the on the uh reflective airplane until i watched it on video at home when i could actually amen. see it yeah visually so if you're listening the, the surface scene, of the plane oh, the was, was, reflective. was going crazy psychedelic and everything and then you've got explosions of fire also on the surface of the plane and you've got vulture on the surface of the plane and spider-man on the surface of the plane and you're watching this fight and there's scene all these sparks trying to track what's and the engines visually. on fire yeah. and i in the theater at one point i said i'll just see what happens on video when i get yeah, <laughs> i'm too, sure something is happening i don't it's remember that i maybe I, I don't know if i followed it or i blacked out but i, probably I was blacked like, out okay <laughs> or had an epilep- <laughs> it's not an epileptic seizure yeah, or something because it, it would do that but i love where the vault the vulture is going to get away with crumbs compared to what he was going to get and spider-man realizes those are going to blow up and he's going to die so he risks his life he's stopped the bad guy really at this point but he risks his life to save the bad guy's life mm-hmm. right for no other reason well it's, a, it's his main girl's dad so i mean come on. <laughs> She doesn't, and and then he does it right, and yeah. so um, that's when I bought into that Spider-Man. Because Doesn't he also leave the note. Does he say you're yeah, from the neighborhood, yeah, Spider-Man? Which yeah, is yeah, classic. You yeah, know, classic. Like so to me, that's when I finally I really liked. That was sealed the deal for me because what I thought the movie was lacking was the whole with great power comes great responsibility. They completely glossed over the Uncle yeah. Ben story, which I understand why they did it because it's been done twice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In recent memory. Right. Uh, but to me, that that's what cuts to the heart yeah. of Sp- Peter Parker. Like, you... like that cuts him so deep that that's his motivation for everything. So I feel like that's lacking in taking the story to another level. But I forgive them for not rehashing it just because like we've we have seen that a yeah. bunch. Right. So yeah. hopefully... I feel like somehow you have to at least allude to it happening in a mention like, well, you know what happened? In the Uncle they ben? did like, yeah, my, she's been through uh, so much right now with Uncle Ben. Like he, I don't he even think they it. say the name Uncle Ben. I think she knows she's been through oh, a lot. Exactly. I think that's all they said. Which yeah. I'm like, that's that's not enough. I mean, that could be yeah. a divorce or something. I don't, I don't know. That, yeah, that could I, be anything. I, so there's an opportunity I, there in future stories to. Kind I of, really liked, and I think superhero movies don't do this enough. Sometimes, um, them, uh, uh, the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, him solving the local crimes, him mm-hmm. being that neighborhood Spider-Man, which I I love. I think yeah. the Superman so movies need the, to do that better. They haven't done that well. Yeah, I love that when they a superhero, that street level superhero, Batman, that sort of when before they get to the cosmic level, yeah. Thanos problems. You need to establish that they are helping everybody. Yeah, and uh, I love that they he spent time what you know stopping the bicycle. Yeah, he's not even doing it well. Like he stops the guy from stealing the car, like, and then he's like, "This is my car." car. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you and that's when Stan Lee comes yeah, out the then, window. I think hey, he did. Marjorie, yeah. you know, he, he did stop a few things, right? And then when the one guy was like, "Hey, do a backflip," he does a backflip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I can do that. You yeah. know, he's just being. Hey, you need to work guy. on this part of the job, Mister <laughs> Glover. Like you yeah, need to work on this part of it. What are you talking about? I'm intimidating. Be intimidating. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So intimidation good. mode. <laughs> intimidation yeah. mode. Set to kill. No, no, with the yeah, kill. Yeah. Stop with the yeah. killing. We yeah. don't kill. Uh, so they do lots of things right. So peering into the future of Spider Man is oh wait. 
He turned to Ash. There's no more future. So I guess we're done. Uh, and we're done. That concludes our podcast. <laughs> yeah. Perfectly balanced. All right. <laughs> so all things should be. So uh, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not. If you don't want any spoilers, close your ears. But they have already slated a sequel to Homecoming. Yes. Spider-Man Homecoming. Yes. Um, and it makes me wonder where are they going to. I hope they maybe they go back into that motivation. Or the Uncle Ben part. I of feel it, like I they should have called it Spider-Man Homecoming Prom. But. Homecoming Prom. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> graduation is a uh, probably a plausible. So they they tease at the end the maybe. the girl that they've been calling Michelle the whole time or something is actually turns out to be MJ. MJ. Uh-huh. Well, I wasn't a huge. <laughs> fan I'm rolling of that. my eyes, everybody, right now. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. right. Up there. I roll complete. <laughs> I roll complete. I was uh, that character in the movie was my least favorite, and then they reveal her to be MJ. I'm like, oh boy. So. It, Maybe they'll introduce Gwen Stacy and they'll, <laughs> MJ will be in the background. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I'm looking forward to, okay, when the the hardest death that you, for a lot of people watching the Infinity Wars was the, Mr. Stark, what's happening? I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Like, again, and then yeah. he turns to, to Ash in yeah. um, Tony Stark's arms. Perfect way for him to go. He sees it coming, spider sense, so he, he has a little bit more time, right? Or whatever it is that let him have more time. And he acts so normal. He doesn't like, remember me as I was. Like some ridiculous heroic pose or something. He acts like scared kid. So, someone who would be scared to die. Like yeah. we, we all could identify. I don't want to go. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, like, so they nailed it. Yeah. It was so a 15 good. year old or 16 year old. Yeah. That, but yeah, you're yeah. totally, it's not some of my, uh, I mean, that was, I was, I found that hard. I mean, uh, I'm a grown man. Sometimes I, th- I think I've said this. And on that, our, that was a moving exit. It, it, uh, a death scene. I think I said this in infinity war episode that we did, but yeah, there was a, at least one or two girls down the few seats down me when I saw it the first time and they were straight up crying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my, one of my, my boy's one of their best friends. He, he, he's a boy. He's like, I flat out, I was bawling because <laughs> like, mm. it was his favorite character. And I don't want yeah. him to die. I don't want him to die. So you're doing good storytelling when, when the heartstrings of the, the character gets pulled or punched that you, the, the audience feels it too. And they're nailing it right now. So the, the future is bright for all things Marvel. And that, of course, includes their flagship character, Spider Man. I think that there's an arc that is potentially going to play out here, which is there's obviously a lot of speculation that whatever the second half of infinity war is tony stark is going to have to sacrifice himself in order to defeat thanos he's going to die right there's also obviously with another spider-man movie slated somehow peter parker's coming back and you can just sort of see uh him seeing his hero die after what we saw in infinity war being that Maybe that's maturation a, moment. Maybe that's an where Uncle ben he, he comes into his Tony own. Tony Stark's going to be his Uncle Ben. And mm-hmm. the timing of the next Spider-Man movie, which at least now is slated for summer of 2019, that would that would essentially make it the first movie of Phase 4. Hmm. So it, it could very well be that it's like, you know, that's Iron Man dies, yeah. he loses his mentor, he's got to grow up, and then, yeah. you know, so... So we've been talking a little while about a little for a little while about Spider Man. It's probably about time to wrap up, right? Even yeah, yeah, you guys yeah, have yeah. Some other, do you have any more ideas or opinions you want to share about mm, Spider Man? No, I'm, I think I've uh, said all I need for I'll, on I'll, that matter. I'll I'll, uh, I'll say something real quick. So if you're interested in Spider Man and reading some things about him, there's a few good story arcs to read. Uh, one I really like is called The Other, and it has to do with this other mysterious person that shows up and has powers very similar to Spider Man and talks to him about maybe where Spider-Man fits in sort of the universe and where he gets his powers. And, and then Spider-Man is actually like reborn with all of these new powers. And it's, it's a really cool storyline. And there's a few more, uh, superior Spider-Man. Uh, I won't, that has a, maybe a surprise or so. I won't, I won't talk too much about it, but it's a pretty interesting, uh, 30 or so comic story arc. So if they walked uh, into a comic book store and said, told the guy, Hey, I want the superior Spider-Man story arc. They'd point you in the they'll, right they'll direction. Know, they'll know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, I won't. I won't. Yeah, I'll, I'll. I'll stop right there. I think that's good enough. Yeah, for because good. Get in you got me to read the. Uh, was it one day more? Was that the their new? There's day? one a new more day. day, and then there's a, a new. There's a new several day. that kind of bleed together. One more day, brand new day, and one moment in time, and all of those brand kind of are day very. Is the one I read. I really enjoyed it. They, uh, some new enemies in there. Very, cool. very huge moments in Spider Man's Peter Parker's life that changes life big time. So, I would also add that uh, you know if you're interested, one of the greatest all time Spider Man moments in history 
is on The Simpsons when Homer Simpson gets a pig and Marge comes home and there's pig <laughs> footprints on the ceiling and she says, how did the footprints get on the ceiling? And Homer's in the ceiling spider holding pig. the pig up. Spider, spider pig, pig, spider, spider pig. pig. Does whatever a spider pig does. does. Can he swing <laughs> from a web? No, he can't. He's a pig. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hero Escapers, we've tied a nice little bow on this episode. We love you for listening. Thanks so much. Please uh, share, comment, and whatever. We appreciate it. Peace out.